Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by an act of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, O Muhammad, were gentle in your dealings with them. Had you been harsh or hard-hearted, they would have dispersed and left you. So pardon them and ask forgiveness for them and consult with them about your affairs and matters. Then when you have decided on a course of action, Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Allah loves those who put their trust in Him. This should lead us to ponder and reflect over our dealings with others, whether it be dealing with our spouses, our children, our siblings, our fellow believers within the community. How is our dealings with them? Is it based upon rahmah, mercy and gentleness? Or is it based on other than that? Even when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrated to us how he told Musa and Harun when they were going to go to Fir'aun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa and Harun, both of you go to Fir'aun for indeed he has transgressed. So say to him a gentle word. Perhaps he will take some heed or show some respect. And according to many scholars, Fir'aun was the worst of mankind. Say unto them, unto him, a soft and gentle word. If this is the case with regard to the worst of creation, then what about of those who are far less than Fir'aun in transgression and enmity? We have to ask ourselves this question. Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrated in a hadith that the Yahud, they came to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on one occasion and they said to him, Assalamu alaykum, meaning they were playing with their words. Instead of saying Assalamu alaykum, they said Assalamu alaykum. And Sam in this context means may death and destruction be upon you. And so Aisha upon hearing this, she became angry. And so she said, may the death be upon you as well and may the curse of Allah be upon you and may his anger be upon you. She was angry. How could these people say this to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Mahlan ya Aisha. Take it easy, O Aisha. Be gentle in your approach. Beware of this harsh character. She said, didn't you hear what they said to you? And then he said to her, but didn't you hear what I said? The response of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa was simply to say wa alaykum and upon you as well. He was even gentle in his words in that circumstance as well. Many people though will think that being gentle is a sign of weakness. It's a sign of essentially appeasing others and doing what others expect you to do. But this is far from the reality. It is about being wise in your approach so that you can achieve what you want to achieve, which is seeking change in that individual. Sometimes we are so overwhelmed and overcome by our anger and we think we are justified therefore to treat them in a harsh way. Your harshness will not make them change perhaps. Rather it might take them further away from the religion and further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For this reason, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he said that whenever you find gentleness, you will find that it will always adorn and beautify the person's character. And whenever it is removed, you will find it will tarnish that person's character and people will flee from that individual. Being gentle has immense benefits, my dear brothers in Islam. From amongst them is that it is one of the paths to paradise itself. For a person who is gentle in his behavior and he is gentle towards the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is most likely that he will be able to fulfill their rights more fittingly. And it is more likely that he will prevent himself from falling into sin. A person being foul-mouthed, it can lead to a person becoming abusive verbally or even physically. Secondly, from the benefits of being gentle in our behavior, is that it's from the completion of our Iman. 
The Prophet said, the only reason why I was sent was to perfect our conduct and to perfect our character. It leads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving you. It also leads to people loving you as well. And if people love you, then you will be in their du'as. They will supplicate for you and they will wish khair for you. It increases the ties of brotherhood and increases the sense of a community if people are gentle with one another. When you are harsh with others, then people will flee and they will not return back to you. Whether it be dealing with the believers and whether it even be dealing with those who show enmity and harshness towards you. But a believer should be gentle with his own self as well. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that this religion is an easygoing religion and no one will try to overburden himself in the religion except that he will be overwhelmed. But do that in moderation. Don't be too harsh on yourself. So try and traverse this path, this religion with gentleness. Go easy on yourself. Don't make the worship of Allah become hated to you. Don't end up despising the worship of Allah because you've made it so hard upon yourself. But at the same time, do not become so negligent of your obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't use the ease in our religion as an excuse to miss your obligations and say, oh, this religion is easy. It doesn't matter if I don't pray five times a day. Allah has made the religion easy. No. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever he has made an obligation upon us, it is within our capabilities to fulfill that obligation. Allah does not burden a soul with more than it can bear. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he said, the believers are hayyinun and layyinun. They're very easygoing people, easy to get along with. The believer is someone who gets along very easily with other people and people find that they can get along with him very easily as well. So if you find that you are amongst those who people cannot really communicate well with, and you're amongst those who you have very difficult relationships with other people, then you need to reflect upon yourself. Because a believer gets along with people very easily. This is how he should be. So assess yourselves, my dear brothers. We should be gentle with those who we give da'wah to as well. With those who we call to Islam. But call to the path of your Lord with wisdom and with a good reminder and argue with them in that which is, or discuss with them in a way which is best and most befitting. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu an, he said when discussing and speaking about people who you see committing wrong and committing evil, then don't support the devil against him. For example, you say to him, Oh Allah, disgrace him. Oh Allah, curse him. Don't say this. Ask Allah to safeguard this person for indeed, we, the companions of the, uh, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we would never say anything about an individual until the day he died. Because if he died in a good way, then we knew that he had a good ending. But if he died with an evil ending, we were afraid for him. Subhanallah. Look at the attitude of the companions and how careful they were with dealing with those who they saw doing wrong. We should even be gentle with the environment around us and even with animals around us. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he once addressed a companion saying to them, there was once a man who was walking and he became extremely thirsty. And so he descended into a well and so he drank from the well. And then when he came out of the well, he saw a, a dog that was, was panting and was literally dying of, of thirst. And so he looked to this dog with sympathy. And he said, this dog is suffering from what I was suffering from. And so he descended back into the well and used his shoe to gather some water together and then he gave that water to the dog and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was grateful to him for what he'd done and so Allah forgave him. The companions they were amazed at this story and they said Ya Rasulullah do we have reward even for helping animals? He said for every living being for you to help them and to be gentle towards them there is reward in that. And from this the scholars they deduced that therefore giving sadaqah to anything that is alive, whether an animal or a human being, is a form of charity, which includes even giving charity to non-Muslims and disbelievers. My dear brothers in Islam, from amongst the most important 
group of people that we ought to show gentleness to is to our spouses and to our family members. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the best of you are those who are best to their family members, in particular to their spouses and to their wives. At the same time though, now we need to reflect, why is this the case? Why is it that out of everyone amongst mankind, the real test to see whether you are truly a good person and a righteous person is to see how you are in particular with your spouse. Why is this the case? If you think, my dear brothers, it is very easy for us to essentially put on a show and to show gentleness to our fellow brethren, for example, when we come to the masjid or, for example, in our workplaces, because the time that we spend there is very limited. However, when we go back home and then we're in that sort of comfort zone and where there's nobody else from the outside world that looks in, then that is when generally where you find your worst characteristics become apparent. And therefore, those who receive your worst character will be those who are most close to you. And therefore, it becomes a greater struggle to show kindness and generosity towards them. So if a person can do that, then that is a true sign of piety. That is a true sign of taqwa. That is why the best of you are those who are best to their spouses. Not those who are best to their friends and to their colleagues at work or in the masjid. Those who are best to their wives and to their children. Look how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was with his wives. In a beautiful story which was narrated by Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu an, he once said, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an, he sought permission to enter into the house of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that there were women from the Quraysh in the presence of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and some of them were his wives. They were raising, they were speaking to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and some of them were raising their voices because there was a lot of women there present, they were asking and demanding a lot. Their voices were raised. And as soon as Umar radiallahu anhi came in, they all rushed and they put on their hijab. When Umar ibn Khattab, he entered, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stood there smiling. And so Umar ibn Khattab, he's amazed. He said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always make you smile and laugh. Yani, what made you smile and laugh when I came in? He said, I was amazed at these women that were with me just now. As soon as they heard your voice, they became scared. And they quickly put on their hijab. And so Umar ibn Khattab, he addressed these women. He turned to the women and he said, O oh, you who is an enemy to your own self, do you fear me and have awe of me, but you don't have awe of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So they replied and they said, yes, that is the case. Because you are a bit more harsh than the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Yes, this is the case, O oh, Ibn al-Khattab, but verily by the one in whose hand lies my soul, that whenever the shaytan, he sees you walking down a, a, a particular pathway, the shaytan will always take another pathway. And this is authentic hadith found in Bukhari and Muslim. But look at the character of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When these women were speaking to him, some were raising their voices. And they seemed to show more respect to, and, uh, to Umar ibn Khattab than to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what was the response of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Did he shout at them and say, how dare you speak to me in this manner? Do you not know who I am? I am your husband. I have rights over you. I am the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He stood there smiling. He stood there smiling because he knows this is what happens in a home. People sometimes, you know, as I said, when you're in the home, that is when your worst characteristics probably manifest. And so you need to show a level of tolerance. If you see something wrong in your spouse or something that you dislike, don't start raising your voices against them automatically. Rasulullah he smiled, subhanAllah. And he couldn't believe it. How they were in front of Umar and how they were in front of himself. But he didn't chastise them. And this is the lesson that we learn. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, Ya Aisha, be gentle in your approach. Because if Allah wants honor for a household, if Allah wants goodness for a household, He points them and He guides them to the door of gentleness. 
Aisha radiallahu anha, she also said, once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he entered upon me, this was the day of Eid. And there were two young girls that were singing. They were singing the lines of poetry that the Ansar used to sing during their times of difficulty when they would go to war with the Aus and the Khazraj. About bravery and about war and about courage and valor, etc. And so the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he just lied down and turned his face away from that. He wasn't particularly interested in the singing. And so when Abu Bakr, he entered the house, he said, is this the music of shaitan in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And so the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he turned to Abu Bakr and he said, leave them, let them be. Let them be, let them enjoy themselves. It's Eid at the end of the day. And when Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he then sort of turned away and he showed less interest, Aisha just poked towards the two girls as in indicate them, okay, you can leave now. Even though subhanallah, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave permission for them to sing, she was still conscious about her father's feelings. And another version of the hadith, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Aisha, do you want to look at them? Do you want to watch them play? And there was a, another version which mentioned that there were some people playing with spears in the masjid, with spears and shields. And she said, yes, I would like to see them. And so he made Aisha stand behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she placed her chin on the shoulder of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so her cheek was touching the cheek of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he kept on asking her, is this enough for you? And she would say, no, let it, let it go on for a bit longer. Let it go on for a bit longer. And then until he said, Hasbuki, is this enough? She said, naam, this is enough for me. And then he said, if fadhabi, then go. So look how the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with Aisha. Look how Aisha radiallahu anha was with her father. We can just see gentleness upon gentleness. Sometimes you might see some shortcomings with your children and with your spouse, but you just overlook it with the intention that gradually and by time that they will improve and come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I will conclude with a hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, should I not inform you about the one who the hellfire is prohibited for? The hellfire is haram upon everyone, meaning who is close to the people and people can be close to him because he's so easygoing. Easygoing in his character, meaning it's, he's very tolerant and people find it easy to deal with him. Allahumma inna nasaluka rifqa fi ta'amulina ya rabbal alameen. Wa sallallahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'een.